Chapter 9.3, Modular Arithmetic. And actually this chapter we're going to throw in a little bit of chapter 9.2 in here. So you'll see a little bit from that as well. Um, but modular arithmetic, now that we have talked all about our base systems and all of that, we're going to move away from that a little bit, but it's going to be something that's very related to the base systems, or at least sort of a similar process for working with it. It's pretty easy to get these things confused, the like process you need to do to work with this versus working in bases because you're going to do similar things, but it's a little bit simpler actually. So just be careful that you separate these two things in your mind. Okay, so first we're going to talk about something called clock arithmetic before we get into the real meat of this, which is modular arithmetic. Clock arithmetic is actually something you've seen before. Um, at least somewhat. You've seen a clock before, and that's where clock arithmetic comes from. Now a clock n arithmetic system is addition and subtraction that only uses the numbers 1 through n and can be represented essentially by movement around a clock with n numbers. That is, once you pass n, we return to 1. Okay, So the one you're familiar with is clock 12 arithmetic, because that's what a normal clock is. Let's see if I can show it to you, right? Got a clock behind me, a normal, normal clock, 12 numbers, right? That's when we move around the clock and we get to 12, we go, we end up back at 1 to, and we repeat. It's cyclical. Okay, so clock 12 arithmetic uses the numbers 1 through 12. That's what our n is in this case. Addition is clockwise movement, subtraction is counterclockwise movement. We can create an addition table within clock arithmetic, like so. So this is going to be the clock 12 arithmetic system. For example, if I wanted to add 4 plus 9, 4 plus 9 is 1. Now why is that? Well, it's because 4 o'clock plus 9 hours gets me to 1 o'clock, right? So we can just sort of go around the clock the way you would in, you know, like you've been reading clocks your whole life in some way, right? You know how these hours work. Or we can also do 9 o'clock plus 4 hours gets us to 1. It should get us the same place. So I can fill out this whole table in this way, like so. This is the whole table, is if I do 1 o'clock plus 1 hour, it's 2. 1 o'clock plus 2 hours is 3, right? But notice that the only numbers that end up in this table are the numbers 1 through 12, because those are the only numbers possible on a clock, unless we're working in 24 hour time, but in this case we're not. It's just 1 through 12, right? So once I get past 12, and notice there is sort of like a pattern to it, right? Um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then I'm back to 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12, back to 1, 2. Like it's this same pattern each time and so it gets this nice sort of um, uh, symmetry to the table because of that. Um, if I add 12 hours, right, I just get back where I started because on my clock, 1 o'clock plus 12 hours is 1 o'clock again, right? So I end up getting like a sort of repeat of the, of exactly what I added it to. Um, so, okay. Um, what about clock other numbers arithmetic? One's a clock that we're less familiar with. So here I want to perform the following arithmetic using clock 8. So I'm going to make a clock, but instead of putting the numbers 1 through 12 on it, I'm just going to put the numbers 1 through 8 on it. Okay? So when I do 3 plus 6, I start at 3, and I just go around 6, right? 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I get to 1. So 3 plus 6 is 1 in clock 8 arithmetic. I know, it's a little weird, right? Okay, 7 plus 8, I start at 7, I go around 8. Okay, well I actually end up returning myself to 7 that way, because 8 sort of brings us back around the entire clock, because that's all the numbers. We've gone through all of them. So it's 7 plus 8 is 7. 2 minus 6 means I go backwards. I'm going back 6 hours on this weird clock. So I start at 2, go backwards by 6, count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I get 4. So 2 minus 6 is 4. 
So that's clock eight arithmetic. And we can create a clock eight arithmetic table in the same way that we created our clock 12 table, where it will end up having the same sort of cyclical pattern. It'll just only be up to eight and we won't get these tens, elevens, twelve. Like it'll look a little bit different here, um, but it'll still cycle around. It'll go two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Instead of nine, we'll be back to one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Instead of nine, it'll be one, two. Like that's basically what happens in the clock eight table. So we can create these other clock tables with any um, any num uh, any whole number that we're given. Okay. Now, from there, we're going to get into the name of this um, uh, section, which is modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is very related to clock arithmetic in such a way that they get easily confused. Um, but there is a big, there's one major difference between them. So a modulo, or modular, which is often shortened to mod M system, consists of the numbers zero through one less than that number, uh, m minus one. It represents the possible remainders when a number is divided by m. Okay, I'll get into that in a moment. But, so look at, this is our new clock, is just gonna be starting at zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 up to one less than the number we were given, instead of going up to the number we were given and starting at one. So modulo 12, or mod 12 arithmetic, the clock again, notice, it's almost exactly the same except the 12 got replaced by a zero. That's literally the only difference is the 12 gets replaced by the zero. It's exactly one change. So you should never write the number 12 in mod 12. And does that sound a little familiar to when we worked with bases? If I was in base 12, I would never write the number 12 or the letter uh, C. But, um, so they're very, it's got this same relationship because it all comes from remainders. So when I divide by 12, the numbers zero through 11 are the only possible remainders. I can't have a remainder of 12 when I divide by 12, right? If I take 24 divided by 12, my remainder is zero because it divides directly. But I'm never gonna get a remainder of 12 because that would mean I just didn't divide out enough. I can divide out another 12. But addition and subtraction work basically the same as they did on the clock, on the clock arithmetic, where we just go around. So let's fill out the mod 12 addition table. The only difference is we now have this zero, but it's still this same sort of cycle. We're still just adding. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus two is two. One plus one is two. Like that's all the same until we get to the part that would have ended up being 12 before is now a zero. So 10 plus two, for example, would have been 12, but instead we're gonna put a zero because we've cycled back to zero now instead of having the 12. That's the only difference. But again, it's still notice this pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, zero, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, zero, one, two, right? It just comes back. All right, so what about mod seven addition? So mod seven addition can be used in some way, uh, like why would I care about these different mods, right? For example, mod seven could be used to determine days of the week, where Sunday is zero, Monday is one, etc. Now you could say, well, I could also do that on a regular clock, one through seven, but then I can't do the arithmetic part of this that we're going to get into. So if today is Thursday, what day will it be six days from now? This is the mod seven addition table. Again, it's just the number zero through six. I could draw my clock, right? If I wanted to, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. If Thursday is, let's see. So we said zero was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so that's my clock. So today is Thursday. What day will it be six days from now? I just go around one, two, three, four, five, six. It's Wednesday, right? Or I can look at my table, four plus six is three. That's where it comes from. But what if I wanna know it's Sunday and then what's 23 days from now? 
Mm, 23 is not on this table, right? Well, again, I could draw my clock. Like I, and I could go around 23 times. It's a lot of spiraling, right? It could get pretty easy to lose yourself in doing that. And what if it was 123 days? That's gonna get pretty obnoxious to have to go around so much. So we want a process to figure this out. Well, that process is just figuring out each week is seven days. So I just cut out any sevens. All I care about is what leftover there is, what remainder there is. So we're Sunday. Sunday is day zero, right? So it's zero plus 23 is, we're gonna be on 23. 23 is three weeks, three sevens, with two left over. We write this as it, 23 is two mod seven. So it's Tuesday. Cause we've just gone seven days, seven days, seven days. So I've gone around the clock perfectly three times. And then I just go two more to get to Tuesday. So the result is actually the remainder when I divide by seven. Now, to expand on that, let's talk about congruence and modulo classes. A is said to be congruent to B modulo or mod M written A with this three line equal sign. So that, that's the congruence symbol. B, parentheses, mod M. Um, if A and B have the same remainder when divided by M, okay? So in any modulo system, we can develop a set of what are called modulo classes by placing all numbers with the same remainder together in the appropriate modulo class. The solution to a problem in modular arithmetic, if it exists, will always be a number from zero through M minus one, where M is the modulus of the system. Okay, so in other words, Let's, these are the mod seven classes. They are, the, they are the numbers zero through six, but all of these other numbers are congruent to one of those zero through six. So for example, 24 is congruent to what in mod seven? Now it's right in front of us here, but let's think about why it would be what it is. So 24, is seven plus seven plus seven plus three, right? 24 equals three times seven to get to 21 plus three remaining to get to 24. This is the number I care about. That is the remainder. So I cut out all of these sevens and see what was left over. I only care about the remainder this time. Um, so 24 is actually equivalent to, or congruent to three in uh, mod seven. It's not congruent to three in other mods necessarily, but in seven it is. Now, what is 60 congruent to in mod seven? Now that you don't have the chart in front of you, how do we figure this out? We just divide and find our remainder, right? So 60 divided by seven. So seven times Let's see, seven times eight gets us to 56, right? So seven times eight equals 56. So we're not quite at 60, how much do we need? So 60 is seven um, times eight plus four is our remainder, four more to get to 60. So 60 divided by seven is uh, eight remainder four so 60 is congruent to four in mod seven. Okay, what is 25 congruent to in mod 12? Okay, so again, 25 divided by 12, well, it's 12 times two to get to 24 and one left over. So 25 divided by 12 is two with a remainder of one. That one is what's important. So it is congruent to one in mod 12. What about 412 in mod four? Well, 412 is actually divisible by four. 412 divided by four is 103 without any remainder. So it's congruent to zero in mod four. Now, we can actually take all of this and do a little bit of arithmetic with um, our modulo classes. 
So remember that I said any of these problems, our answer should always be less than the mod number. It should be 0 to, if it's mod 7, 0 through 6. If it's mod 5, 0 through 4. Those should be our answers. Even though there are technically congruent numbers we could place in there, to get full credit we want to be placing the, um, the lowest answer, like the, the number that is under the mod, right? But not negative. Okay. So determine the positive number replacement that is less than the mod for the question mark that makes the statement true. 3 minus 5 is congruent to what in mod 7? So there are a few ways we can go about this. We can think about this as a clock. Once again, where I put my clock, so I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And I start at 3. I subtract 5, so I go backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it's actually 5. So this will be my answer. Do I always want to have to draw a clock to do these? Not necessarily, but a lot of times it's very helpful. So using that clock is a great resource, right? OK, but let's do it without the clock. So what I'm allowed to do in these problems is I'm always allowed to sort of convert between the modulo classes. Um, or convert between the congruent um, numbers within those classes. So to do this, I just add or subtract 7 from any number in the problem that I want to. That'll give me something better. So technically, 3 minus 5, we know that to be negative 2 normally. I could add 7 to that to get a positive number. Oh, boop, that's 5. Alternatively, I could add 7 to the 3 in the first place. So I never have to look at a negative number. I add 7 to this. If I add 7 to this, I get 10. 10 minus 5, that's 5 also. All of these get me to the same answer, right? So I can just move my numbers a little bit around, like shift them around by 7, because 7 is the mod, to get to my number. Because that's just, remember, these are all congruent to each other. They all have the same meaning. Um, within this modulo class, as long as I'm just adding and subtracting the 7, the mod number. OK, how about question mark minus 4? It's congruent to 3 in mod 5. So normally, what would my answer be here? 7, right? 7 minus 4 is 3. But 7 is not properly in mod 5. So all I need to do is just pop that down a little, right? And now I'm going to be shifting things by 5 because I'm in mod 5. So 7, pop that down, 5. All right, seven, pop that down 5 to get 2. So 7 minus 4 is the same thing as 2 minus 4 in mod 5. Um, so 2 minus 4 is congruent to 3 in mod 5. And again, let's look at this visually. Let's draw the clock. Mod 5 it was 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, I don't go up to 5. I only go up to 4 because there are five numbers here. And I want what minus 4 is 3. So basically, I'm working backwards from 3. So I'm at 3. I want to have subtracted 4. So I want to be going this way towards the 3. Boop, 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 boop. There's 2. So that's my answer. So we can do this visually. We can do this numerically. You, you can make those changes wherever you want. There's As long as you're working with that mod. Okay, let's do one more. 5 minus question mark is congruent to 7 in mod 8. Okay, so once again, what would my normal answer be? Oh, well, this time it's like, it's, it's a negative 2, and we don't like that. We don't, we don't want to work with negatives as much as we can. Like, not everybody's understanding of negatives is great, so let's not do that. So what would make this problem a little easier? Bumping that 5 up by 8, right? So if I make this 8 more, and I'm picking 8 because that's the mod number. 5 plus 8 is 13. So if I now ask question 13 minus question mark is 7, well, that has an easier answer, right? That's just 6. That, that I can just answer. But again, I could do this with a clock, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, only going up to 7, right? But there's 8 numbers there. 5. Minus what gets me to 7? So I just count backwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Would you look at that? 5 minus 6 
gets me to 7. So there's all these different ways you can do this type of problem, right? So try it with the visual method if you're a more visual person, or try it with the arithmetic method if you're more, if you're better with just numbers, you know? As long as you're working in your mod, be careful of what you write on that clock, right? Zero through one less than that mod number should give you that, uh, the mod number of number uh, digits that you wrote, right? Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look at module classes using uh, with multiplication. So most of what we do in with mod classes is um, addition, subtraction type stuff because we can visualize it on the clock. It's nice, but you can multiply with mods too. But we don't so we don't divide. We just multiply here because it's a little tricky. So here I'm going to do, uh, notice the way I've written this. Determine all positive number replacements less than the modulus for the question mark that makes a statement true. Notice that all implies there might be more than one, and in fact that's true. There might be more than one answer, and, it, and there actually could be no answer too, which is interesting. That's not something you get with regular multiplication. So the hint here is that we replace the question mark with each number under the modulus, then determine which multiples are in the given equivalence class. So, I'm going to start with the first one. 2 times what is, is uh, congruent to 3 mod 5? Okay, I'm going to replace that question mark with every number that exists in mod 5. That's 0 through 4. So I've got 2 times 0, 2 times 2, 2 times, uh, 2 times 0, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, and 2 times 4, right? And so I write out what those are normally. I can just do that quick multiplication, right? 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, all of that. But I need to then rewrite them, keeping them under my mod, right? So 2 times 0 is 0, that's fine. 2 times 1 is 2, that's fine. 2 times 2 is 4, that's fine. But 2 times 3 is 6. 6 in mod 5 is 1, right? Because it's 5 with 1 left over, 1 remainder. Okay, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 is 5, with 3 remaining, uh, remainder, so it's 3 in mod 5. And my question was, 2 times what is 3 in mod 5? Well, that is my 4 right there, so my answer is 4. So I got one answer there, but that's, again, not always the case. 3 times what is 0 in mod 6? So once again, I'm going to multiply 3 by all the numbers in mod 6, which are 0 through 5. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Well, 6 is 1, 6 with 0 left over. So the remainder is 0, so 6 is 0 in mod 6. 3 times 3 is 9, which is 3 remainder, so 3 in mod 6. 3 times 4 is 12, that's another 0, because that's directly divisible by 6. 3 times 5 is 15, that's another 3. There's a nice little pattern here, right? So my answer, uh, my question was, what is 0? Well, I actually got, th got it 3 times. 0, 2, and 4 all gave me 0 in mod 6. So my answer is all 3 of those numbers, and you have to give all of them, because those are all the answers. Okay, now similar question. 3 times what is congruent to 2 in mod 6? I'm not, I don't have to do, redo any of the work here because I've already written it out. And notice that it's either equivalent, uh, congruent to 0 or to 3. None of them are congruent to 2. So in fact, there is nothing, I could, not even decimals, because we don't use decimals here. It's all whole numbers, right? So 3 times nothing gets us to 2. So there is no solution to this type of problem.